Hey there. Um, I don't know. I think this this is one of those points where I'm going to have to uh, disagree. I don't have very good video editing software, or at least I don't know how to use it um, if I do have it. So I'm just going to play the video and respond as we go. Rebecca Watson had announced at the bar that she was tired, she was going to bed, and she said, good night, guys. I can almost guarantee that it didn't happen in that tone of voice. Um, one other thing I want to mention, that context is important. Um, a lot of people have been saying, well, this happened at, in an elevator at 4 in the morning. Yes, but people measure time relatively. Um, it's 4 in the morning, but it's 40 seconds after, you know, Rebecca has just finished her last pint of Guinness or Tom Collins or what have you. Um, if she was drinking, if not, then what have you. But, the, you know... People do measure time relative to when other things happen, when other things have just happened, when things are going to happen. Um, and yeah, w one thing I will mention about alcohol, it's not an excuse to be completely freewheeling, but sometimes one does have to repeat yourself because it does impair the ability of, body, uh, the, uh, the, ability of the brain to pay attention. Right there is your evidence of disrespect when she's further has to deal with being followed into an elevator and proposition for coffee. Good to have someone mention it's coffee. Coffee. Not sex. Coffee. Just, this is not at triple uh, XILD, but this is at a lot of people online. Sometimes coffee is coffee. Okay, you know, she probably didn't even think to say, didn't I just say? <laughs> didn't I just let you know I'm tired? Did I give you some body language that made you think I was interested in further discussion about how we should get to know each other better and what you think and how you're feeling right now? I understand you're having feelings right now and I have to deal with those now. I have to deal with those. And what it feels like to me is like you're coming on to me as I'm maybe the only woman in the room we don't know that. Um, I think a lot of the ratio being bandied about was about four to one. Anyway. You thought it was okay to ask me for further innocent encounter when I've already said I'm tired, I'm going to bed, guys, good night. I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure that's, um, I'm not sure that's welcome. I'm not sure that, that um, I shouldn't let you know that's unwelcome, okay? That's what Rebecca did. She let you know that type of thing is unwelcome. No, and here is where I have to disagree. Um, she didn't let Elevator Guy know. Here's what she did. Instead, she got up on her uh, particularly loud, uh, loud and large podium and let the internets know that this guy at this conference did creepy, creepy thing. Um, so now this isn't what you've done is unwelcome. This is public humiliation and shaming. Uh, it's a completely disproportional response. And among other things, it ensures that Elevator Guy has no opportunity to respond in any way, shape, or form. To ask questions, to learn, even to genuflect and say, oh, right, what the hell was I thinking? No, no, no. Elevator Guy right now is kind of busy finding a dark, dank hole to die in. She felt sexualized. That's something entirely up to her and the other dude that was in the elevator with her. None of us know anything about that. She felt sexualized. Maybe she felt sexualized because she didn't think that if Richard Dawkins had said, Good night, I'm going to bed, I'm really tired, that somebody would have approached him in the elevator for further socializing up in their room. Okay, at 4 o'clock in the morning. They might have actually respected his boundary there his will to go off on his own and they would have left him alone, okay? When she says she feels sexualized, she's saying, look, it, because I'm a woman in the room with a bunch of dudes, I gotta deal with this. It's oppressive. It's annoying. Don't do that. And I agree with her. I actually agree with her. If she says she felt sexualized, I'm going to believe her. I'm not going to debate and demand fucking evidence from her. The evidence is already there, okay, that 
he's discriminating. Um, no, because once again, you've created this scenario with Richard Dawkins where you say, you think that his boundaries might be respected. Of course, I imagine that he's probably got his share of fanboys too, like most celebrities. At any rate, um, it's really, really interesting to point out the, uh, the differing language, uh, the differing levels of respect in language and how actions which involve gender are not necessarily unidirectionally gendered. I mean, if someone had had, um, well, for example, you, you use the phrase dudes to describe the men at the conference, you use the phrase women to describe the women at the conference in this story. If I had said men and chicks, if anyone had said men and chicks, it'd kind of be considered um, not respectful language and discriminatory language. But hey, you know, I mean, a dude's a dude. That because she's a woman, that means he's, it's okay with him to disregard what she said when she... And based on a sample size of one, that must be true. ...said, I'm tired, I'm going to bed. Good night, guys. And just totally disrespected that and thought that it was okay to go ahead and, you know, have an encounter in the elevator and proposition her. Mm -hmm. For coffee, as you mentioned. How much more evidence do we need here? Really? Um, evidence of what? Evidence of the most unwise, awkward encounter ever? Sold. Um, well, not ever, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah, elevator guy, that won't work for you. Um, that won't work for anyone. It's gonna occasionally, apparently, um, lead you to become a uh, international laughingstock. So, yeah, yeah. Um, definitely only ask someone out in public where there are witnesses. Uh, you know, unless that offends your sense of pri propriety, in which case, you know, ask someone in public, but I guess, I don't know, it's illegal to, to record conversations, so, eh, I don't know. Um, try online dating. I mean, people who know each other can, like, prod each other, poke each other, say, come on, let's have a good pull an all-nighter with me. I got tequila in my room. I've got scotch from Badger. Okay? This is what she's talking about when she says sexism. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how you escalate up the, uh, the ladder of intimacy when you're providing um, another example. He didn't say, come to my room, I've got an all-nighter and, you know, a 40 of scotch and a garbage bag full of weed. He did ask her for coffee. Um, you know, which is to say at least there was some sense of propriety on Elevator Guy's part. Um, wisdom, no. <laughs> wisdom, no. I, you know, um, it'd be endearingly creepy would be how I'd react to something like that. And it has happened to me. <laughs> um, anyway, continuing. Okay. And it can go both ways. I mean, I'm sure women proposition men when they're tired and that sort of thing. But when a woman who's at a conference, who's speaking as a feminist, who's speaking about being like one of the few women in the room and all the stuff that she has to deal with, she's going to lay down... All the stuff she has to deal with, by the way, to be specific, since we're talking about evidentiary standards um, and the video of her uh, speech to the conference is online, she was talking about some really creepily sexualized hate mail she was getting. Um, stuff that said along the lines of, you know, you're a horrible bitch, and you deserve to be raped, and God hates you, and, you know, don't take this the wrong way, but would you maybe like to get a coffee sometime when you're in the Philly area? Oh, wait, that last one didn't happen. So, there's a lot of false equivalents that seem to be floating around in this debate. Boundary, it's really simple. Good night, guys. I'm going to bed. Bye-bye. She walks off. And what happens? She's followed somebody who actually doesn't fucking believe what she just said. There's your evidence right there. Yeah, um... I somehow think it wasn't as declarative uh, as that. And, but yeah, sometimes when leaving a gathering, people will continue to talk to you while you're in the process of leaving. Um, you know, it's, uh... It's a thing that happens. And that's why no means no. So that she can then say, no, bugger off, and we're done. Um, but instead, hey, why, why not just, you know, make him internet fodder? <laughs>